Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is an unboxing and assembly video for this. Uh, this is the 2017 San Diego Comic Con exclusive Cobra Missile Command Headquarters. This is a modern re-release of the classic 1982 Sears exclusive Cobra Missile Command Headquarters, one of the rarest of all the G.I. Joe playsets in the vintage line. This was released officially by Hasbro, and it was exclusive to the San Diego Comic-Con. Um, and uh, this is just a really interesting piece to me. The uh, 1982 playset was one of my grail pieces that I was able to uh, get last year. I've been looking for it for a long time. I was finally able to get it. Um, and this is supposed to be basically just a modern version of it. So I'm very interested in seeing you know, how they interpreted that classic cardboard playset um, in modern form. Uh, the classic set, the 1982 set, came with the only three Cobra action figures that were available at the time. Uh, it had Cobra Commander and uh, the Cobra Officer and the Cobra Trooper. And the earliest releases of that set had the Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, uh, one of the rarer variants of the original straight arm Cobra Commander. Well, this one has the modern uh, versions of those classic figures. So we, are, we will have three figures in here, a modern Cobra Commander, Cobra Officer, and Cobra Trooper, and the set is still cardboard like the old one. Uh, but I'm expecting the construction will be a little different than the classic one. And of course we have modern figures uh, instead of vintage figures. Now I did already um, open this uh, because I needed to peek inside and make sure everything was there. Uh, and um, the reason I did that is because um, uh, there's an awful lot of box here for not very much stuff inside it. In fact, it was um, it, it seemed so empty that I wanted to make sure there was nothing you know missing, nothing that had been taken out of it. Uh, but everything was there, um, and so this is brand new. Um, we will be assembling this for the first time. All the contents are still sealed in the factory sealed bag. Uh, so instead of talking about it uh, all day, let's um, get a little bit of a close-up and then open this up and put it together. Let's take a look at the box first, and I will drop in some still photos of the box uh, so you can get some, a detailed look at it. Um, the box uh, is made to look old. Um, it's printed, uh, the entire box uh, is printed in full color. Uh, but it's actually printed in such a way that it looks like it has some wear on it. It looks like uh, the uh, white parts of the box uh, has um, uh, kind of faded and, and uh, turned slightly yellow. And so it's actually made to look old, um, kind of pre-distressed. Uh, if you look at the front of the box, there's even like little uh, nicks in the cardboard. Uh, well, I mean, printed on there. Uh, not real nicks in the cardboard, but it's made to look like it's um, basically an old 1982 box. A really interesting uh, approach. Um, I'm not so sure about it. Uh, I have seen uh, more than one uh, vintage collector uh, fooled into thinking that this was the classic 1982 release. I'm not going to name any names, but I'm just saying uh, a couple people who are, you know, somewhat experienced collectors, at least at first glance, uh, thought that this was something that it was not. So uh, that's a little bit of a problem with this. Um, but if you look closely at it, you should be able to tell pretty quickly this is not the 1982 release. For one thing, the photo on the front clearly shows the modern figures, not the vintage figures. So uh, that's one giveaway. Um, and if, um, if you're not certain uh, based on the front of the box, uh, the back of the box does say copyright, um, I'm sorry, copyright 2016 Hasbro. Um, so uh, you should be able to spot this as a modern re-release and not the classic one. So let's open this thing up. I've got this end open. Um, I'm just going to slide everything out because, like I said, there's, there's a lot of box and not much stuff in it. So um, let's just pull it all out. 
And that should be everything, yes. Set the box aside. Um, and here's what we've got. Um, we have a Cobra Commander figure. I will um, zoom in here for a second. We've got the Cobra Trooper and we've got the Cobra Officer. These are all bagged. Um, let's get in a little bit closer there. Oops. And that Cobra Commander figure, uh, there we go. That Cobra Commander figure uh, does have the Mickey Mouse uh, logo, Mickey Mouse Cobra symbol on his chest, like that old classic one did. Um, but of course, it is a modern figure. Uh, they have uh, they're bagged with red back file cards, uh, very much like the original. Uh, and let's look at let's zoom back out a little bit and look at what else we have. Uh, we have pieces. We have cardboard pieces. We have some plastic pieces. Uh, these are the fasteners, uh, the plastic uh, fasteners that will hold the thing together. Um, and the rest is cardboard. Um, and these pieces, those are the seats. And there's there's the missile and uh, part of the platform. Um, and th this is a little different from the classic one. Um, the old 1982 uh, playset uh, did not have the pieces cut out. It, it came basically with big uh, printed sheets uh, with the uh, cardboard, cardboard pieces printed on them and they were um, uh, perforated. You'd have to kind of punch them out yourself. Uh, but these are die cut, uh, so these are already cut out for you. Um, and the cardboard, um, uh, I don't have them out of the package yet, but the cardboard feels pretty sturdy. Um, but it's not thick. It's, it's not thicker than the classic one, uh, but it feels a little more sturdy. So uh, let's um, open this thing up and find the directions. Oh, there's the direction sheet and uh, put it together. These bags are taped, so I don't have to cut anything. So let's just pull this out. Hold on. There we go. Uh, let's pull this out there. Let me get the instruction sheet. Um, and this includes the the file card card holder. The file card holder is very similar to the one that came with the 82 version. Uh, came with this thing. We'll look at that later. Uh, but first, we got to look at the instructions and see what to do. So let's find step one. Okay, it looks like it wants us to get the work platform that's in this bag here and that will go into piece B all right this is the this is piece G the work platform that will go into piece B which is where is piece B that is not in there uh, it's right in here so we got to open this one all right now if this were the vintage toy um, boxed of course I would never open that but um, this I got at an excellent price I think some of the prices that you're seeing on eBay for these are a little inflated um, and I've noticed them you know the asking price for these has been high but I, they don't seem to be selling at that high price so um, so I was just patient and waited until I got one that was the price I wanted to pay. Um, uh, about half of what uh, I had seen them uh, going for, so that I thought was appropriate. So I got one that was inexpensive enough that I felt comfortable opening it. Okay, so we need to, we're going to be folding a lot of cardboard here, folks. Uh, so this is the... Uh, work platform and we need to fold fold these pieces now in case you don't know the uh, classic 1982 playset was a cardboard playset and that is one of the reasons it is so rare uh, in addition to the fact that it was an exclusive to um, to Sears, so you know they just didn't produce as many of them. Um, there we go. Um, a lot of them just did not survive playtime. Uh, they were uh, not very sturdy, 
which is why I felt very lucky to uh, to get one that was in nice shape. Uh, okay, so this, let's see. All right, this will go. Let's see, that goes here. No, not there. Of course, it goes in the place that is exactly shaped like it. So let's get that in there. That's a tight fit on those uh, tabs in those slots, which in one way is good. They won't come out easily, easily but it also does put a bit of strain on the cardboard. Um, like the classic one, this one is not very sturdy. Um, so there's that, and then this piece is going to go um, on here. Uh, so let's see how that works. It looks like it goes. Uh, looks like it goes like that. Okay, I think I see. Okay. Uh, now the this thing just came out of the box, and you saw that I took it out of the factory uh, plastic bags, but. The, um, the back section, the um, basically the, the backboard to it, has uh, it's slightly curved. Um, so I'm not sure about that, and I hope that doesn't cause us too many problems putting it together. That goes in there. Yeah, really tight fit on those slots. And these appear to be, ah, I see. Yeah, okay, so those, yeah, there we go. It does all fit, but you have to work with it a little bit. All right, there we go. So here's what we've assembled so far. It does kind of have a 3D effect to it. Uh, it does have like multiple layers. Uh, and those do make platforms that the figures can stand on. All right, next thing it wants us to put together the control panel that is in this bag here. Fairly good sized control panel. Um, and this has, uh, looks like a somewhat complex, uh, comp complex way of folding it. I want to make sure I do it right. It's like origami, uh, I see. So that goes like that. And then it bends again, it looks like. Yeah. There we go. Uh, they did crease the plastic, or I'm sorry, they, crease, they did crease the cardboard to make it a little bit easier to bend and to show you exactly where you should bend it. Uh, but there it goes. Yeah, more bending. Okay. Um, looks like that, oh, I see. I think I see. They don't exactly make it easy for you. And yeah, wow, that really got to work with those tabs to get them in without really damaging the cardboard. Um, I, I feel like they tried to maybe do a little more with this than the original release did, but, um, but they're still working with a not very sturdy material. So uh, yeah, they did not make it did not make it easy. All right. Oh, and there's a tab that needs to go in. All right, that was complicated, and I just can't wait to see how much of a pain it is to to fold and assemble this side of it. This is a little bit of a struggle to get this assembled the way they want you to assemble it without tearing the cardboard. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Got that. And now I just need to get that piece in and this thing is ready. Get it in without, without tearing it. Kind of, I'm, for some pieces, I'm pulling it through from the back side in hopes of uh, getting it in without without tearing the tearing a hole through the slot. I mean, it's not that it's not too complicated. I mean, it's a little bit, yeah, uh, making this shape out of a flat piece. 
but uh, it's made a little more difficult with the fact that the slots are a bit narrow for the tabs. So there you go, there is the control panel, looks okay, and then the control panel will go on here. Uh, let me see, is that the next step? Well, yes it is. Uh, and there should be mashing slots, yeah, there are mashing slots in this piece for the tabs on the back of the control panel. And once again, they did not make this easy. Ah, there we go. Uh, all right. Okay, I have to proceed with some caution because I just, I got these other pieces on and I don't want to tear them while trying to get this piece on. All right, about got it, about got it, about got it. Okay, got it on. That was, I feel, harder than it should have been. Um, so, there we go. So now we have the, con the control panel uh, connected to this uh, uh, this uh, support piece here, and then this platform in front. Uh, but I have noticed that because this uh, back piece is curved backward, it wants everything to uh, wants to make everything fall backwards. So um, that is a little bit of a problem. Oops! And I just noticed I didn't get one tab in here at the side. Maybe that'll give a little bit more support. Uh, pop that in. There we go. All right. So yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of difference, but um, here's what your Missile Command Headquarters should look like at this point in the assembly. Okay, it looks like the next step is to assemble the elevator. Yeah, that is still leaning back. That's not super cool and I don't want to bend that forward too much to straighten it because I don't want to crease the cardboard. So uh, this looks like the elevator. There's the elevator. There we go. Uh, and somehow we're going to make a 3D shape out of it. So let's see. Um, should be just a matter of bending at the creases. But some of the creased sections are very narrow, which doesn't make it easy to bend. So that's supposed to go like that. Um, uh, when I do the review of the 1982 Missile Command Headquarters, I will do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, between that one and this one. That is not for this video. This is just to assemble the uh, 2017 release. So this looks like, uh, let's see, this looks like that goes in. All right, I think I figured it out. Uh, the illustration isn't as helpful as I would like it to be, but I believe these tabs on the side go in the outside of the assembly and then through the side slots. Not that that's easy to do with the way they've cut these slots and the tabs. So let's get this in. Okay, yeah, that looks like that's how it goes. So that tab goes there and this one looks like it goes underneath and tabs in through the bottom, which again is a tight fit uh, to get in. Um, didn't think it'd be this much of a struggle, but I guess I should have expected it um, with the cardboard. Now, I, when I got my 1982 set, it was uh, unassembled, and I did uh, assemble it. I put it together myself, and it didn't seem this difficult. Okay, with some struggle, I think we've about got it. One more tab on this side of the elevator, and we should have a completed uh, elevator car. Ooh, I think we got it. Okay. So that appears to be a completed elevator car. Uh, so let's see what the next step is. Okay, so the next step is uh, to use our plastic fasteners here. Uh, let's pop that open. It should have a plastic screw and washer. So let's see what we got. Uh, let's see, I guess 
This is the washer it looks like, and that is the screw, I think. Uh, looks like we've got two of them. So that's the right number anyway. So this goes in, let's see, fit screw and holes of elevator. Um, insert it through one of the elevator slots. Okay. A slide washer into screw, fit screw through one of the holes in the elevator. There is, where was it? I saw it. There it is. Oh, it's got to be punched. Let's punch that through. There's a, a bit there, but uh, it's not punched out. And that hole, again, is really small. All right, I zoomed in a little bit more to try to help you see what I'm doing. I don't know if that will help very much because uh, I've got to assemble it facing me because I need to see it. So, all right, so first screw is going through this hole in the back of the elevator. Uh, it should go all the way through, there we go. And the washer is inside. We've got these uh, clear plastic washers and there are these tiny uh, white plastic screws which I almost dropped that one, way to go. Okay, and that one goes through there. Um, not easy to reach and line up, but there we go. Actually, that was easier than I thought. <laughs> uh, we are supposed to put this on the elevator uh, in these little um, uh, slots here, these rails that it runs along, and the, here I actually can show it to you from the front because I need to see it from the back. Looks like these pieces go on the back ends, make sure that's correct. Line up the screws from the inside, um, and I'm supposed to hold on to the head of the screw while pushing the fastener in from the back. Oh wow, that's not easy. There we go. Okay, so now the elevator is on, and I've got these fasteners screwed in somewhat firmly, so it shouldn't slide. Actually, that's too firm. Um, it should not slide too uh, loosely. Yep, still too firm. Let's loosen it up. I do want it to slide, but uh, I just don't want it to slide too loosely. Okay, there we go. So that should, <laughs> there we go, slide. Uh, around and then down. Ooh, okay. There we go. And there, and it goes down, and then it can go back up and over. And I, I the elevator on my vintage piece works better than this. It's, it's, yeah, it just works a lot more smoothly. So anyway, I'll just leave that there. Elevator is on. What is the next step? The next step appears to be uh, the seats for the control panel. I'll just leave that there. I'll zoom her out a little bit and let's put these together. Um, I am missing one of these seats on my vintage piece. Uh, they're all the same, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but um, uh, I don't. I don't know if um, the seats on the San Diego exclusive would fit on the vintage um, command center. I actually don't know. Um, maybe that's something that I will try, but of course uh, the, uh, there we go. The reissue is no substitute for the original. So, um, Ever since these have come out and some other uh, modern uh, modern reissues of some vintage classics, uh, people have had all kinds of theories about them. Uh, one theory that people have, which um, I don't believe is quite accurate, is that um, is that these reissues of the modern uh, of the vintage pieces will somehow bring down the price of the vintage. Like, so why buy the vintage if you have a modern equivalent, there we go, um, that looks more or less the same uh, and is cheaper. And to that I say, 
Um, that doesn't make any sense at all. If you're a vintage collector, then these modern reproductions are not a substitute for the vintage because no matter how much they may look like the vintage and no matter how much um, they may substitute for the vintage, they are not vintage. Um, and for a vintage collector, the whole idea is to get the pieces that actually existed at the time, to find the survivors, uh, to hold in your hand the actual, for real, piece of history, to have something that is authentic and um, having something that just kind of sort of looks like it, uh, it just ain't the same thing. In regards to the pieces like this bringing down the price of uh, the actual vintage pieces, I've seen no evident evidence that that's happening, um, either in vintage G.I. Joe or in vintage Star Wars, where similar things have been done by Hasbro. Um, I just, the economics uh, the, that people are using to um, argue that these will bring down prices on vintage toys, I, I, don't, I don't think the logic quite works out on that. Um, and I, I certainly don't think that, the, that there is evidence to support that, uh, to support that that's actually happened. So uh, whether you like these things or not, whether you think they should be produced or not, or whatever you think they do to the market, what uh, certainly is not doing to the market is bringing down the price of uh, the vintage toys. I mean, go find a 1982 uh, Missile Command headquarters. Look at the prices of them. See if you think those have come down. I would have to say they have not. Uh, they seem to be um, as high as they ever were and going up. If you were inclined to buy one of these and have one of these in, in your collection uh, and forego the vintage equivalent, uh, most likely you weren't in the market for the vintage one anyway. So uh, this isn't going to, this gives you something to buy, right? But it doesn't actually, uh, if, if, it doesn't actually take you out of the vintage market if you weren't in the market for the vintage one in the first place. Uh, so now we are going to assemble the the cruise missile. Uh, all kinds of uh, theories that people come up with to. Um, explain uh, market forces on collectibles and most of them are most of them don't really wash most of them don't really make a whole lot of sense if you think about them so this goes in here I believe I'm doing yeah I'm doing it right press the fastener into the screw twist and adjust so yeah on this one the fastener looks like it goes on the outside um, that's an interesting choice, but let's do it the way they tell us to do it. And yes, indeed, it looks like they want you to have the fastener on the outside. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, possibly so that it will be a little easier to adjust. So I believe this goes in like so, yes. And let's put the fastener on and put some tension on that so it will hold the missile in an upright position. That wasn't so hard, was it? There we go. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, there is the Missile Command Center headquarters basically assembled. Um, and yeah, we've got the missile, um, which you can position. We've got the elevator, which you can slide around. We've got platforms for the figures. We've got seats at the control panel for the figures. Um, and there, uh, so we're not quite done. Um, it doesn't appear to be in the instruction sheet, but we still need to assemble the file card holder and of course take the figures out of the bags and put them with the set.
So the file card holder was a peculiarity of the 82 um, headquarters. It's just basically a box with a, a flap on the back that holds the file cards for the figures that came with it. Um, some collectors consider the playset to be complete without this. Um, I do have the file card holder for the 82 headquarters. Uh, I would not consider the playset to be complete without this, uh, so I do have it, but um, but I can kind of see why some collectors might just skip it. This is not part of the base, it is just an extra extra box. Uh, so now, we've, now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and open these figures. Let's look at the modern figures. All right, why don't we start, why don't we start with Cobra Commander? Let's start at the top. Uh, with Cobra's leader, old Coco here, uh, and we have some accessories including a figure stand in a bag, um, and we have the figure itself, uh, a modern construction, and yeah, um, uh, there are some folks that collect modern figures, and I am not really one of them, although I do have a fair sampling of modern figures. Oh, look at that. <laughs> His foot came off. Okay, so, all right, quality control issue. Let me see if I can snap that back on. There we go. It does snap back on, um, but man, that, the joints are quite stiff, quite stiff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, if you like modern figures and you want to collect modern figures, then you should. Um, and I encourage people to um, find a hobby they enjoy and to go for it. So if that is what you like, then absolutely do. Um, but um, but I, uh, collecting modern figures to me is just not the same as collecting vintage. It's a different... Uh, type of collecting entirely so well not entirely but it's a different type of collecting um, and so just pick what you like or do both if you feel like it there's the red back file card uh, it appears to be uh, in many ways the same as the uh, vintage file card and I'll just go ahead and put this in our file card holder and let's um, pop these accessories open and uh, completely assemble our Cobra Commander here. Uh, he's got a figure stand. Uh, he's got a helmet. So there. He doesn't quite look right without his helmet. So there you go. Helmet. And he's got a pistol. And the pistol can either fit in his hand uh, or it has, like the vintage figure, uh, the hole in the back uh, where his Venom laser pistol can connect to his back to like a, a charging station here. Let's let's do it right now. Uh, but it does not go on very very easily. Oh, oh, but we got it though. We got it. We got it. So Cobra Commander can hold his laser pistol on his back or in his hand. Uh, he comes with a tiny knife on his that goes into a sheath on his left leg like so. Now, this has a lot of callbacks to the vintage figure. It has the Mickey Mouse symbol on his uh, chest. That is a simplified Cobra emblem, uh, referred to as Mickey Mouse because the eyes at the top are kind of separated and look a little bit like Mickey Mouse ears. It also has a red stripe on the right leg, but not on the left leg. Um, again, kind of reflective of the uh, vintage figure. So. Uh, yeah, lots of callbacks to uh, 1982 Hooded Cobra Commander. I'm sorry, I'm Hooded Cobra Commander. This is the faceplated Cobra Commander. Um, so lots of callbacks to that, and we're going to try to put him on this stand. But the holes in the feet, oh man, do not fit well, and I'm afraid I'm going to pop the foot off again. Ah, there we go, sort of. So there's Cobra Commander um, on his stand. And let's move on to the next one. Since we started with Coco, I guess if we're working our way down from the top, the next would be the Cobra Officer. Uh, let's pop him out of this bag. 
Um, these bags are taped, and I guess if you wanted to reseal everything, just toss everything back in the original packaging, you could. Uh, and I guess that's good. Uh, but there is the Cobra Officer with the silver Cobra emblem on his chest. Um, sometimes it's modern articulation, and it's got a lot more articulation points than the vintage figures, but sometimes it can be a little awkward. Um, but, uh, oh man, those, those are some stiff joints, so um, I guess that is also good. Okay, and there is his Redback file card, uh, similar to the vintage file card. Let's just pop that one in there into our file card holder. There we go. And he has a bag of accessories as well, so let's pull that out and get him put together. There we go. Uh, the tape is in the way. There we go. All right, and he has a helmet like so. There we go. Got his helmet on. And he has an AK-47, uh, just like the, the vintage figure, uh, although this is updated and modernized. It's not a re-release of the vintage AK. And a figure stand with Cobra Officer printed on it. So let's try to get him on this figure stand. See if it's any easier than with uh, Coco. There's one foot. And there's two feet. Okay, actually that was a lot better than on the Cobra Commander figure. So there you go. There's Cobra Officer. And that leaves us with one more, our Cobra Trooper. Um, I do appreciate all the callbacks to the vintage uh, set and the vintage figures. I, I do. I, the, um, I, I have to appreciate that because I appreciate history. Um, I appreciate their attention to history. Uh, and although it's kind of cool to have this set and put it together, um, you know, as a vintage collector, of course, that uh, this does not fill the hole that the vintage set does. So there we go. All my file cards in my file card holder. All right. Um, pop out the accessories. Ah, that tape is very sticky. There we go. that. Let's get the figure out. And there is the the Cobra Trooper, very much like the Cobra Officer. It's some different web gear and a red Cobra emblem on his chest. Um, as with all the modern figures, they kind of have sort of a giraffe neck and they kind of slump. You know, the neck is jutting kind of forward a bit. Uh, Alright, there's his helmet. Get that all the way on. There we go. And his weapon, uh, the Dragonov sniper rifle. Let me get his arm joint turned the right way. Whew, yeah, again, quite tight joints on there. Uh, there we go. Get him in a semi-human looking pose. All right, so there's his Dragonov sniper rifle, like the vintage. And there's his figure stand, and let's try to get him on. All right, that's about it. I think we're about done here. All right, there you have it. Uh, the three included figures with the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, Cobra Missile Command Headquarters. Um, and that's the whole thing. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and assembly of the modern Cobra Missile Command Headquarters. It was more challenging than I expected it to be. Uh, those cardboard pieces didn't fit in there as, as easily as I thought they would. But we got it all done and it's all together. Uh, kind of a neat looking set. I'm glad to have it. Um, but um, if everything goes as planned, you should see this video uh, a few days after you see the uh, review of the 1982 
uh, version of this toy, the original. So uh, that should be my first contribution to Cobra Convergence 4. Uh, I hope that is going well. I'm recording this uh, before Cobra Convergence starts. Uh, because I actually needed to assemble this before I could do my review of the 82 set. So, um, so I hope that's going well. Um, this will be uh, going up after Joe Fest, so I hope Joe Fest went well. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, the, you should get another Cobra-related review from me on Sunday and more great Cobra Convergence stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.